In this video, we pit the new Type 54 AP frigates of the Pakistan Navy, the Tugru, against the three main frigates classes of the Indian Navy in a series of hypothetical one-on-one -on -one combat encounters. As a disclaimer, I do not claim to be totally impartial. Like all human beings, I have my own biases, but I will make an effort to be as objective as I can be. As a background, the PNS Tugru is the lead ship of four Type 54 AP frigates that China is building for Pakistan. This warship class is the export variant of the Type 54A frigate of the Chinese Navy. If you don't know too much about the Tugru class, I recommend you watch my video on this topic, which is linked in the top right hand corner. Basically, the Tugru class frigates are multi role warships capable of area air defense at a medium range, anti-surface strikes, and anti-submarine warfare. To defend itself, the Tugru class is armed with 32 HQ-16A surface-to-air missiles, or SAM, in an 8x4 VLS configuration. VLS stands for Vertical Launch Systems. The Tugru is equipped with an active phased array radar, the SR-2410C, that runs on the C-band frequency, which is powerful at a relatively short distance. This suggests that the radar is more focused on a high refresh rate at short distances for tracking sea-skimming cruise missiles, which in any case cannot be tracked until they have appeared across the horizon. There is also a lower frequency Type 1517 radar intended for long-range surveillance. For anti-surface warfare, there are eight YJ-12 supersonic cruise missiles. These are export versions, so they have an official range of just 290 kilometers, owing to arms control regulations, and we will assume that this figure is true for the purpose of this video. Some people think that the Tugru has only four anti-ship missiles, but I have explained in a previous video why I believe this is actually eight missiles. Before we get started, we need to establish the reaction time that ships will have when faced with an incoming YJ-12 missile, or India's BrahMos supersonic missile. So, the high frequency radars that are used to track missiles are reliant on the line of sight. For lower frequency radars, the line of sight is not needed for detection, because their longer wavelengths can diffract around the Earth's atmosphere to some extent, allowing for over-the-horizon detection. But, low-frequency radars are not suitable for tracking fast-moving supersonic cruise missiles. I will not be going through the mathematical calculations here, but here are the reaction times I came up with. Both the BrahMos and the YJ-12 missiles fly at about 15 meters above the surface of the sea. The YJ-12 flies at a speed of around Mach 2, which means the reaction time of about 45 seconds. The BrahMos is faster at Mach 2.8, so the target only has 35 seconds to react. Clearly, the BrahMos is the more powerful missile that leaves as little time as possible for the opponents to respond. Notes though, just because you can track a missile doesn't mean you can necessarily do anything about it. The distance at which you can actually respond depends on the effective range of your air defense weapons. First up, we pit the Tugru class up against the Brahmaputra class frigate of the Indian Navy. The Brahmaputra is a fairly old, first generation frigate designed for anti surface action. Truth be told, this class lacks any stealth features to speak of, has an outdated and underpowered main radar, and while it has a large arsenal of 16 anti ship missiles, these have less than half the operational range of the YJ-12, and are also subsonic. I don't believe the Brahmaputra class can actually threaten the Tugru under normal circumstances. The Brahmaputra is likely to be detected well beyond the range of its primary anti-ship weapons. The Tugru, with its purpose-designed stealth features, will be likely to remain concealed at this point, and should be able to launch a first strike with its YJ-12 missiles. The Brahmaputra frigate 
will probably know that there is an enemy ship out there somewhere using a signals interception system, even if it cannot locate the enemy. The Brahmaputra class is unlikely to be able to intercept YJ-12 missiles eight times in a row. It only has point defense weapons, meaning it cannot respond until the YJ-12 missiles have closed to within a dozen kilometers. The Brahmaputra has an 8x3 VLS configuration for the Barrack 1 short-range SAM, but VLS is not suitable for extremely close-range interception of supersonic missiles, because once the SAMs have left the VLS pod, they need a few seconds to pick up speed and pick a course. The Brahmaputra has four AK-630 closing weapon systems, but these are old systems designed to intercept subsonic missiles. In the best case scenario, the Brahmaputra might be able to intercept maybe two YJ-12 missiles until it gets hit, but it is almost certainly going to be taking catastrophic damage. If, for some reason, the Brahmaputra is able to launch subsonic missiles at the two group, the Pakistani ship is well placed to intercept these, with two HQ-16A SAMs going after each incoming projectile. Basically, this is a battle between a new warship with state-of-the-art technology against an aging warship designed a decade previously. Unsurprisingly, this fight heavily favors the Tugru. The next scenario pits the Tugru up against the Tawa class. Like the Brahmaputra class, the Tawa is a dedicated anti-ship frigate, but it is a major improvement from its predecessor. The Tawa class introduced some stealth designs, although the cluttered top side of the ship suggests that it is still not as stealthy as the Tugru. The Tawa has a single-arm SAM launcher for medium-range air defense, although this should be considered an outdated weapon. The most important improvement is the eight supersonic cruise missiles as the primary anti-ship weapon. The Shri ships of Batch 1 uses the exports version of the Russian caliber missile with a range of 220 kilometers, while the Batch 2 ships are armed with the BrahMos missile, with the same range as the YJ-12 at 290 kilometers. Because the Tawa class is not a true stealth warship, under favorable circumstances, the two Gru may be able to get in a first strike without being detected first. But the two Gru's main search radar is not tailored towards long-range searches, so it is more likely that both warships will be able to detect and track each other before the missiles are fired. If the Tower class is of the Batch 1 design, the two Gru has a definitive range advantage. It should be able to get off a first strike while staying out of the range of the Indian ship. The air defense of the Tower class has not actually improved by very much from the Brahmaputra class. The Chateau 1 single arm SAM launcher, designed for medium range, suffers from its limited firing arc and a slow rate of fire compared to a modern VLS system. The single arm SAM launcher needs about 6 seconds to reload after firing and several more seconds to adjust its bearing and elevation. It can probably fire one SAM every 10 seconds. The rate of fire on the YJ-12 launcher is about one every eight seconds. This means that each incoming YJ-12 missile will be met by just a single medium range interceptor. A general rule of thumb for intercepting subsonic missiles consistently is to fire two SAMs at each, at each one. A single SAM at a supersonic missile is not likely to hit. Moreover, if the YJ-12 does not approach from the front, and instead from the aft or the port or starboard of the ship, the single arm SAM launcher becomes useless. Either way, you will probably end up with 5 to 6 YJ-12s going up against the tower's point defense, which consists of just two closing weapon systems, an obsolete short-range SAM launcher, and a bunch of missile decoys. I don't see how this can possibly end well. Therefore, I believe the Tugru is favored against Batch 1 of the Tower class. Things become more interesting 
when we take a look at the Batch 2 Tower class, which has the same range as the Tugru, with their BrahMos missiles. In this case, both warships will probably be able to launch their cruise missiles at each other. In their attempts to intercept the YJ-12 missiles, the Batch 2 Tower class is probably not going to fare any better than the Batch 1 ships, and will probably go down. However, the two group will have to attempt an interception of the BrahMos missiles of its own. The HQ-16A SAM has sufficient range to engage the BrahMos as soon as they are detected, and is reasonably fast, but it is also quite large and not very maneuverable. However, the two group carries these SAMs in four VLS blocks of eight cells each, compared to the single VLS block on the tower from which the BrahMos missiles are fired. Assuming the same rate of fire from their respective VLS, the two groups should be able to put up four HQ-16A SAMs against each incoming BrahMos missile. Like all modern cruise missiles, the BrahMos can be rerouted in mid-flight so that they arrive in pairs, but this does not change the 4 to 1 ratio between the SAMs and the BrahMos. Given the reaction time of 35 seconds, it will take the simultaneous arrival of at least four BrahMos missiles at exactly the same time to reduce the number of SAMs that can be used to intercept each missile. Unless the engagement distance is very close, it will be very difficult to synchronize the BrahMos missiles so that they all arrive at exactly the same time, since they all have to be launched from the same VLS block. In my view, Interception should be successful in the majority of cases. If a BrahMos does avoid interception at range, the two group still has a pair of Type 730 close-in weapons and the HQ-10 short-range SAMs for point defense. These are effective point defense weapons that will provide reliable goalkeeping. That said, the BrahMos is one of the world's best anti-ship cruise missiles, so interception is only possible this is definitely not assured. In some iterations, the two group may very well be eliminated. However, my opinion is that the two group is better placed to intercept the, Pra the Bramos than the Tower frigates can intercept the YJ-12. So this fight still favors the two group just by a smaller margin. India is purchasing four Admiral Grigorovich class frigates from Russia none of which has been delivered yet. These are called the Improved Tower Class by the Indian media. They are expected to be armed with the excellent Barrack 8 medium-range SAMs in a 12x2 VLS configuration. A cursory glance suggests that the two classes will be similar in terms of their interception capability. You will have two Barrack 8 SAMs, which are a very good interceptor, going after each YJ-12 missile compared to four average interceptors and the HQ-16A SAM going after each BrahMos. However, the two group will still have a much better radar for tracking missiles at horizon distance, so it arguably still has a slight lead over the improved tower class. Our final battle sees the two groups square off against the Shivalik class, the most advanced frigate in service with the Indian Navy currently, and was domestically constructed in India. The Shivalik class is the first Indian warship to feature a combined diesel or gas turbine propulsion. Judging by the exterior, its stealth capability is probably on par with the two group, incorporating structural, thermal, and acoustic stealth features. For anti-surface firepower, the Shivalik class uses eight BrahMos missiles, just like its predecessor. However, in terms of air defense, the improvement is rather minor. The Shivalik class, for some reason, still uses the Shatil-1 single-arm SAM launcher as its only medium-range interceptor. There is no change in the primary air search radar or the missile fire control radars. Like the Tower class, the Shivalik class continues to use the two outdated AK-630 autocannons for points defense. The one notable improvement is the installation of a VLS system carrying 32 Barrack 1 short-range SAMs in an 8x4 VLS configuration. 
Because the Shivaluk and the Chugru are probably about as stealthy as each other, we shouldn't expect an undetected first strike to be more likely from either ship. On average, they will probably launch their anti-ship missiles at each other, and the battle will come down to their respective interception capability. A hypothetical encounter between the Chugru and a Shivaluk class frigate will probably develop similarly to the encounter with the Bash 2 Tower class. There is a marginal improvement to the Indian warship's ability to intercept the YJ-12 cruise missiles. The addition of the short-range SAMs in an 8x4 VLS configuration does mean that four SAMs can act as point defense against each YJ-12 missile, which may mean that the Shivalik will survive the YJ-12 salvo occasionally. However, VLS systems are generally not suitable for intercepting supersonic missiles at extremely close range. So I believe that the Shivalik frigate will be put out of action by the YJ-12 more often than it successfully intercepts the entire salvo. The missile interception on the part of the, of the Tugru did not change at all. There are still eight Ramos missiles coming towards the, the Tugru, possibly in pairs, and the Tugru can launch four HQ-16A SAMs to intercept each Ramos. Same as before, the Tugru has better closing weapon systems. The balance of capabilities between the two warships is still such that the Tugru is better able to intercept the Debramos than the Indian frigate is able to intercept the YJ-12 missiles. So, the verdict is still that the Tugru is slightly or moderately favoured against the Shivalik class. In my opinion, the Tugru is favoured to win in a head-to-head -head encounter against each of the three classes of frigates currently in the Indian Navy. In fact, all classes, if you count Batch 1 and Batch 2 of the Tower class, as separate classes. A recurring theme has been the deficiency in the air defense capability of the Indian frigates at a medium range, which keeps putting the Indian side on the back foot. It is not enough to rely solely on point defense weapons, like the AK-630, because these have only a small window of 5 to 10 seconds to be effective. Interception at point-blank range is flimsy when you're up against supersonic missiles. In contrast, the Tugru employs a large VLS of medium-range SAMs in addition to its very capable point defense weapons. This allows the Tugru to take advantage of the full length of the reaction time, the entire 35 seconds, to maximize the probability of interception against the BrahMos missiles. This allowed the Pakistani warship to come out on top. In my view, the analysis here suggests that frigate's design should aim to have a balance of both offensive and defensive capabilities, and medium-range anti-air is part of this package. The Indian Navy appears to be well aware of this shortcoming, and the new designs in their naval construction program are intended to fill this gap. India has ordered four improved Tower-class frigates from Russia, which is expected to have a 24-cell VLS carrying the Barrack 8 medium-range SAM. Two of the four ships are scheduled to be commissioned by 2023. India is also constructing the new Nilgiri-class frigate, which is designed to carry 32 Barrack 8 SAMs in an 8x4 VLS configuration, and will also have a more powerful active electronically scanned array radar that will be better for tracking sea-skimming missiles at short range 